and we find that African slaves resisted right from the shores of Africa. When they knew that they were being taken away from their families, that they resisted, and they uh, would jump off the boats. Um, they would struggle uh, with everything that they had. Also, we find that um, in the Middle Passage itself, we find that boats were taken over by the slaves and the Amistad uh, boat, the, the, the famous, well-documented uh, boat, has come into popular literature and understanding. And this Amistad is an example of resistance of the slaves. And so um, this struggle continued right into the Americas. Muslims resisted in Jamaica, in Trinidad, in St. Vincent, in uh, all regions within the Caribbean basin, in Central America, in the United States. There were different forms of, of, of slave revolts. Um, there was in America, Nat Turner, Denmark, Vizi. Um, there were so many uh, different ways to resist. It is reported also a woman, Harriet Tubman, uh, developed the Underground Railroad, where she uh, enabled Muslims uh, or African people to flee uh, from the South into Canada. And so this became one of the greatest African resistance in the West. What concerns us here is um, to bring out an aspect of this resistance that in the past has been overlooked. And that is the presence of Muslims. It is now recognized that over 30% of the slaves brought to the Americas were Muslims. Now we are seeing documentation coming to the surface. We are seeing that Muslims maintained their culture of writing Arabic, that they maintained the ability to express the Qur'an, to express their Islamic culture, even though they were in a state of slavery. One of the most well-documented uh, uh, resistances that happened in the West was the case of Brazil. Brazil was a Portu Portuguese colony that was developed in the early part of the slavery period, and it was known for its high production in sugarcane. From 1540 to 1570, the Indians, the native people of Brazil, were used in order to deal with the sugarcane, but they couldn't handle the pressure, and this was their original land. So they refused to submit, and either would die on the plantation, or they would escape. And so Africans were brought from the Senangambia region, from Benin, coming down from uh, Nigeria and that part of West Africa, and also from Angola. From the Senangambia region, there came the Wolof, the Mandinka, who had the very strong traditions within Islam where you had uh, uh, great Mujahideen, great strugglers in West Africa. Uh, also from Benin, there were Hausa slaves, there were Ashanti and there were Yoruba. And a sizable number of the Brazilian slaves also were in a state of Islam. They were described by the Portuguese as exceedingly spirited and resolute. They were also described as the most intelligent element amongst the imported Africans because many of them could read and write the Arabic language. So amongst the slaves that came to Brazil, and um, this is a special phenomenon that happened in Brazil, and we don't find it like this anywhere else in the Americas. There were a number of imams and teachers called malams amongst the slaves. And so they were able to unite the tribes and they were able to actually concentrate themselves into uh, Islamic communities. The main section of the Muslim population in Brazil was a province called Bahia. And in the Bahia uh, section, the Muslims were well known um, for their personalities and um, the way that they conducted themselves. It is said that the Muslims would get up early in the morning, um, they would go to bed early, they, they lived a quiet life, they were very reserved uh, in their conversations, they lowered their gaze, restrained their glances, they did not lie, they did not drink alcohol, um, they practiced polygamy, they had more than one wife, 
Um, but one interesting aspect about the, the Muslims there, and it shows the strength of the Imams, they did not allow the men to beat their wives. And so um, from that, a culture develops, a culture of justice uh, develops, and the, the, the women within the Islamic community of Brazil um, were, were powerful also and involved in uh, the struggle. The Imams and the Malams, the teachers, were able to carry out the different Islamic rituals. They carried on uh, the, the ceremonies of birth, of marriage, of janazah. Um, they developed an independent uh, system of thinking. And from this independent thinking, a type of collective leadership uh, developed. And this leadership had the concept of Amir, where the masses of the Muslims related to uh, their leader and were prepared to uh, uh, do anything if it was commanded by their leader in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in May 27th, 1807, the first revolt took place in Bahia. It was uh, a powerful revolt. And the intention of this revolt was to kill the masters poison the water system, and to return to Africa. But unfortunately, um, spies, weak-minded hypocrites, munafiqeen, in the ranks of the Muslims, um, gave the information over to the authorities. And the government then waited for the revolt, and just before it was about to take place, they, su they suppressed it, and they killed the leaders. But they took some of the people who were involved in it and they put them on boats and they sent them back to Africa. The second major revolt was in 1814, between 1814 to 1816. This was a spontaneous revolt. It was not organized in the way of the first uh, revolt. And because of this lack of organization and the spontaneous nature of the revolt, they were able to um, uh, kill many of the masters and they were able to, to, to capture certain sections of the land, but they were eventually put down, and many of their ringleaders were either killed or sent back to Africa. The largest revolt took place in 1835, and this is known as the Great Revolt of the Males. What is important to understand is that um, this revolt was led by Muslim scholars, and there were 10 Muslim scholars in particular who gathered together and who wrote different uh, documents. They would send the wathiqa um, to the other people. And, and, and you can see a document here, which is actually from Brazilian Muslims, written in the Arabic language. And so the leaders of these revolts came from different parts of West Africa. The well-known Sheikh Dandara was a Hausa uh, Muslim. Sheikh Sanim was a Yoruba Muslim. Malam Abu Bakr Ahuna was also a Yoruba, and he was the most well-known uh, person uh, of the revolt. And also Malam Bilal, um, he was also Yoruba and a well-known person within the revolt. What happens now in, in this concentration, that we find a powerful force coming out of the Muslims, they literally had developed masjids. There were 20 known masjids in Salvador, which is like the capital of Bahia. And they gathered together within the masjids and they uh, established special uh, meeting places like diwans or special uh, places where they would gather together in order to discuss the revolt. And so through these secret meetings and their connection with their emir and by communicating in the Arabic language and taking a special oath from the people, they were able to spread the word of a large revolt far and wide and it was not detected uh, by the authorities. They chose Ramadan as the date of the revolt. And, um, but unfortunately again, Munafiqeen uh, came into the picture and they informed the government authorities about this upcoming major revolt of the Malays that was to take place. Even so, a strong fight continued, and the Muslims were able to take the struggle all throughout the countryside. 
they were able to conquer certain sections within uh, Salvador, but because of the technology, the weapons, and the organization of the Portuguese army, um, the revolt was actually eventually put down, and a mass deportation happened, where many of the leaders and many of the people involved in the, in the revolt, instead of just being killed, they were put on boats and they were sent back to West Africa. And it is interesting today that in Lagos, in Nigeria, you can pray in a Brazilian masjid. So you can make your salat in a mosque that was built by Brazilian Muslims who were captured, struggled for their independence, and eventually returned to West Africa, and they built masjids within a, a major West African city. What this revolt showed was the fact that even under the most difficult circumstances, Islam was able to unite uh, different tribal groupings. It also showed the spirit of struggle that Muslims were maintaining, especially those who were reading directly into the Book of Allah and following the Sunnah traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. These revolts that are happening in the early part of the 19th century, the ones that are happening in the 1814 and then going up to 1835, they coincide with the great Hausa Fulani uh, revolutions that were going on in West Africa. Sheikh Uthman Denfodio, Rahimahullah, of Sokoto, of northern Nigeria and Hausa land, was a great scholar who succeeded in uniting his people and overthrowing the authorities in Hausa land and developing an Islamic state of over 250,000 square kilometers. So the spirit of the, the, the Sheikh coming out of his literature and the people who were captured and unfortunate in slavery still showed out even though they were thousands of miles away in Brazil. And so um, today when you see a Brazilian and, and you see the spirit that they have and the young people are watching the Brazilians in soccer and they see the strong spirit, recognize that a good percentage of Brazil are Muslims and there are hundreds of people who are coming into Islam today in Brazil. I leave you with this, uh, this new gem of wisdom that has come forward from the untold stories of history. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.